Server components have become a very popular keyword in recent times. Most developers that work with React usually deal with normal components or client components. So what in the world is a server component? Well, in simple terms, React server components are components that are fetched and rendered on the server. They pretty much don't exist if you look for them in the client side bundle. Whereas client components are components that are fetched and rendered on the client. Now to visually understand this, Next.js provides a beautiful example. The sections highlighted in purple are server components and the ones highlighted in blue are client components. So the idea here is to render all components that do not require any user interactivity on the server side and components that require user interactivity to be rendered on the client side. So the components in the purple regions are only displaying some information and therefore do not require any user interactivity. So they are server components. Whereas the blue regions such as search and buttons require user interactivity and are client components because the client or browser can take over these components and add interactivity to it, which would give a faster user experience since the JavaScript bundles are present in the browser for client components. Now in order to understand all of this better, let's understand why are server components useful in the first place. Well, generally what happens is, when a user visits a React application, the server sends a minimal HTML document containing a reference to the JavaScript bundle. This bundle includes the React framework, application code, and any required dependencies. The browser then downloads the JavaScript bundle specified in the HTML document. Once the JavaScript bundle is downloaded, it is executed in the browser, and then React takes control of the application's UI rendering and event handling. Now this is a very time-consuming process due to the browser having to download download and execute the JavaScript bundle on the client side, which can be huge in size. And this is exactly where server components come into the picture. With server components, large dependencies that previously would impact the JavaScript bundle size on the client can instead remain entirely on the server, leading to improved performance. With server components, the initial page load is faster and the client side JavaScript bundle is reduced. Now how to use server components or client components in Next.js 13? Well, that's pretty simple because Next.js, in order to make the transition to server components easier, have made all the components inside the app router as server components by default. This allows you to automatically adopt them with no extra work and achieve great performance out of the box. And to use a client component, you just have to specify the use client directive on the top of the page. And that's all it takes to make a component a client component. So components with no use client directive on top are server components and components with use client directive are client components. Now when to use server and client components? Well, to decide between whether to use server or client components, Next.js has specifically summarized the different use cases for when to use them. You can go through this table, but to summarize, if you need to fetch data or reduce client-side JavaScript, then use server component. And if you need to access browser-related things such as on-click, on-change events, browser APIs, or if you need to use any React hook such as use state, use effect, and so on, then you need to use client components. Otherwise, Next.js will end up throwing an error. So that's all about server and client components. You should start experimenting with these features more to be able to properly grasp this new mental model for building hybrid applications that leverage the server and the client. If you found the video insightful, do like and subscribe and stay tuned for more.